What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Scuba Driver. My name is Steven. Today we're going to be doing a bumper sag fix on my 2013 Scion FRS. If you remember a couple of videos back, we fixed the bumper sag by replacing the stock bumper mounts, but after taking it off to do the headlights last video, we broke them all again and the bumper sagging, if not a little bit worse than it was before, I'll show you guys that in a second. But today we're going to be fixing that with some quick releases here. I got these off of Amazon, so I'll put the link in the description below for these. So hopefully this helps. But first, Kevin is bringing over his new or his toolbox for us to use in the garage since we're going to be working a little bit more on the Aston Martin and uh, maybe a few other cars coming to the channel. But we need some better tools. So we got a rolling toolbox, probably going to go over here, over here in my garage. So let's get the Aston Martin out of here and then we're we're going to fix the bumper as well. It sounds so good every single time. All right, guys, so it's a few days later and we got the toolbox in the garage. So we uh, I stopped filming that night because we went ahead and organized all of this and it took a little while to get it all set up. But we have pretty much everything that we are going to need. Every little tool. Kevin went through and organized it all night the other night. We were out here until about one o'clock in the morning. But anyways, we're gonna get back onto the quick release. I got the FRS in the garage and I already went ahead and removed the bumper. If you guys uh, don't know how to remove the bumper, you can go back to my previous video when we did the headlights, uh, the Spec D headlights, and uh, I kind of went into detail of how to remove the bumper there, but it's very easy, just a series of clips and uh, 10 millimeter bolts. But anyways, we're gonna get back to it. Today we're going to do the quick release tabs for the bumper. We got two drill bits here um, to make sure they fit so i went ahead and got a three quarter inch one and a one inch one i'm pretty sure the three quarter inch is going to be perfect for that but anyways we're going to start working on that drill the holes out and we'll show you guys step by step what to do all right so just a quick before and after we haven't done the driver's side yet but this is what the bumper sag has been looking like you can clearly see all three tabs right here we just got the passenger side done and although it's not perfect it is much more flush we did a little bit of shaving in there as you as you guys just saw and now it sits way better so this is with the uh, quick release tab and this is without it way bigger difference all right so what kevin is doing on this one this is our uh, driver side uh, bumper mount we're actually making another hole that's going to sit a little bit closer to the headlight so we can put the screw for the quick release tab right through that so instead of using these stock clips, which we were starting to do on the passenger side, we realized it needed to be a little closer to the front where it's flush on the bumper, which I'm gonna show you guys right now. So this is where the stock bumper mount sits. I'll put a link in the description below from where I just changed these out a couple of videos ago. But anyways, this is where we're gonna be drilling our new hole is a little bit closer to the front. We're gonna use these stock clips here and the quick release tab uh, screw will actually go right in here. So Kevin's now drilling through the screw hole he just put into the tab right into the middle of the bumper. just like that we're in so this is where our screw is going to go so one thing we found while we were doing the passenger side is these bumper clips barely fit on there so does a headlight bracket they're not very tight so we actually put a self-tapping screw into the side here so we'll show you guys exactly where to put that go through the plastic first and then push up get it nice this, and tight this one's still kind of tight See, there is way less play in that and I think that was causing a lot of the bumper sag was this thing barely fits on there to begin with so now we're gonna put a self-tapping screw into this uh, headlight bracket as well so now we just screwed another hole into the uh, headlight bracket here to give it less play as well he's just taking another screw he's gonna screw that right into the bumper and this is gonna hold this part on uh, a lot more flush all right so to replicate this on that side if you've got a pair of calipers just take the end you don't even have to measure it just hit it on the crown the outside of that bolt and go to the inside of that and lock that in that way when you do the other side you can you know to put that bolt there and the head of that's going to sit right there so you have it perfect on the other side sick uh, yeah. good before you put it on the car just for measuring right there and just take it, kind of snug it up, so we know that we're going to be right there. You can take Sharpie if you want, 
and just mark that last thread so we know exactly how if far we're it's gonna pop out a little bit behind that we know we're almost right on a little bit's not gonna matter but as you know you're right there as close as possible so we kind of forgot another step that we did on the uh, passenger side is you have to modify this a little bit just by using a Dremel. So we'll let Kevin do that. We're just gonna cut a couple tabs off to make sure the, what, the nut fits on there. First, safety is number one priority. You gotta put those goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm wearing glasses, they don't cover enough. So where are we gonna cut at? So we're gonna cut here and here. Then I'm going to come here and cut across and across here. And then across here, we're going to leave this up here for the brace. But you can cut this part out and then we'll go down and then we'll use pliers to cut that out. got the bolt on there and Kevin is just going up behind the fender liner to put the uh, nut on the back of it so that way it secures it to the back of the fender and then we'll go ahead and uh, line it up and we'll show you guys how to screw the hole into the front all right so a little trick and you don't have to have snap on but once <laughs> you get the rear, the back snug so you're gonna go uh, bolt or nut washer plastic fender washer and nut and once you have it snug on the back, right on it. So that's a little too far out, so we're gonna have to adjust it. Yeah, right. I didn't have it too tight on the back. Yeah, right. On. All right, so now we're gonna mock up exactly where we're gonna where we're going to drill the hole into the bumper. So Kevin's gonna use some tape here. If you do not use tape on the outside when you're drilling these holes, your paint's gonna flake like crazy. It's just gonna tear the paint off of the a little bit on the back okay so what we're going to do is take this paint pin and we're going to put paint on the end of the tab and then once we put the bumper up to mock it up that paint is going to stick on the back of this tape and we can drill from here and that gives us our pilot hole exactly where we need to drill on the outside of the bumper so all right, so Kevin is putting the paint pin right on the tab right there. Oh, oh, and our bumper's gonna fall off, that's okay. That's why we're fixing it. And he just presses, and that's gonna show us on our painter's tape on the back where we need to drill the hole. Just, as you can see, just like that. So we're gonna take a small drill bit, go through, oh, go through the front, and then we'll do the larger one uh, right through the back. All right. We got my rainbow color dog back there too. Don't mind her. See, we got the hole exactly where we need it. All right, so this should fit perfectly into our pre-drilled hole here. And then you just take the little washer. Little nut. It's a little nut. And it goes right on the back there. And you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. So this is a 24 inch socket. And just do it by hand until it tightens. There we go. Nice. Now we're on. All right, so we did end up getting the bumper finished uh, the other night. And as you can tell, hardly any more bumper sag left. You can still see a couple little the clips right there, but honestly, much, much better. If you look at the beginning of the video, you can tell that there, the bumper sag was a lot worse. So definitely glad we went ahead and did that. I know that was the most drastic measure that we could do for this right here, but uh, I'm glad we went ahead and did it. The quick release tab, I think looks pretty, pretty good with the, uh, the rest of the arrow on the car, kind of blends in with the rest of the black we got going on. Plus, you know, matches the Aston Martin on the driveway here anyway. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope the install video helped you out a little bit with the details and how you can get your bumper sag fixed with the quick release tabs. I'll put a link in the description below where I did get the tabs from so you can get pick some up yourself. Pretty sure they're like 20 bucks, $25, so not that big of a deal. But anyways, thanks guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Probably be working on the Aston X or uh, we got a little something coming for the FRS too. See you guys later. Peace.